Hey guys, Koala in here, and today actually I'm going to do something a little bit different. Uh, something I've been thinking about for a while here is doing uh, public service announcements uh, having to do with board game world, different things that, uh, tips and tricks that I've learned over time, things that have annoyed me, and and uh, so I'm going to start it off today with counter clipping. So anybody that uh, has perused the war game forums before or has uh, thought about it knows that there is a big thing called counter clipping in the war game world, which is where you take your square uh, little war game counters such as this and you clip the edges off of them. And uh, there's a lot of uh, you know different ways to do that. Um, you can use nail clippers and carefully clip off each corner. There's a device called the C4 counter uh, clipper or C4 counter cutter that uh, does a stack of them at a time by stacking them up and basically jamming it with um, with an X-Acto blade and that kind of leaves it in an octagonal shape. Of course, just cutting a little bit off the corner so it's not a perfect octagon, but uh, um, but you know I've always thought about cutting the corners. The reason for that um, is mostly I would say cosmetic. Um, it gets rid of the burrs uh, on the edges after punching them out and a lot of the war game crowd just thinks the counters are easier to handle and just look nicer. Now of course it serves no gameplay purpose um, but hey us war gamers are a strange bunch and uh, what better way to spend uh, a Saturday night than counting or clipping rather you know 2,000 plus counters. So anyway I started a uh, a thread a while back um, asking for tips and tricks on how I could cut counters one-handed because being in left-hander view, uh, left-hander views rather you know that um, using two hands is a little bit of a difficulty for me. So, you know I had a lot of uh, good suggestions, a lot of people did suggest the C4 counter cutter. The uh, Unfortunately with that device you know, you need a lot of dexterity with the hand that's holding the counters down and, and I'll uh, shoot a link uh, or I'll put a link in the um, in the video here for you to check that out because it's a great device for those um, that it works for. But for me, it just wouldn't work. Uh, so I was on the um, I was scouting out for something a little bit different. And I ha had a lot of great suggestions. My original thinking was to make some sort of jig and run that jig through a, a scroll saw. Um, but you know, it just seemed like a lot of work. It couldn't really you know, form something up in my head that could be universal to work with all different sizes and shapes of counters. Um, but we did have some great suggestions there, and I'm going to, going to put a link to that thread as well. Well, just recently in the forums, there has been a new device that has taken the war game world by storm, and that would be this here. This is a 3 millimeter radius um, cutter. I think it was originally designed for cutting uh, hard plastic materials such as credit cards and rounding the corners off them with a 3 millimeter radius. Um, it, this uh, particular one is distributed by a company called Oregon Laminations and you can get it on eBay. The price is steep, I will warn you of that. It is about $35 plus shipping. I think it came out to about $40 shipped to your door. Is it, is it worth it? Well, for me, one-handed, it is uh, exactly uh, the type of device that I needed to start with. Now, I say start with because this is still not a one-handed device. You need one hand to grip it, and it's got a pretty stiff spring there, and you need a pretty fair amount of force to actually uh, punch to the counter, and you need that other hand to navigate that counter in. Now, sure, I could kind of do one of these, tick the counter in, hold it, kind of push here, clip, but that's going to take forever, and also you need to make sure that the counter is lined up well enough there are these guide rails on it um, but it always helps to make sure it's lined up perfectly with your fingers before you punch it to get that perfect shape. So I'm going to show you what I did and which actually some of you two-handed folks may uh, try out as well because it's going to eliminate a lot of that uh, um, hand fatigue that you get. So let's take a look at the process that I use. So the first thing you need to do is get out of war games. So I decided to try my uh, luck using um, a copy of Panzer Blitz, Hill of Death. So I started by punching out all the counters here, and there's only a few left because I've been at it for a while and I'm confident enough now to show you. Of course you've got to have your obligatory snacks to snack on, and of course a good war movie going on in the background. And of course, the mascot. 
and another one that just doesn't care. Anyway, so here is how I do it. First thing I do is I'm going to take the cutter. This is the then this is the bottom side here. This is where the clippings are going to pop out. So I make sure that that is always going to be face down. I also have one of these handy dandy um, kind of uh, grippable clamps where you just pull it like a trigger and it and it clamps up. It's got a nice rubber coating on it, so you're not going to damage a table or whatever you're going to use it on. I'm going to place this on the edge of the table like so. Just hold it here. Take the clamp. Clamp down on the edge of it like so. Get it there nice and tight. So now this isn't going anywhere. Okay. Now, now as you can see, since the device is not going anywhere, I can just simply push down on it with my arm. Let me raise this table up a little bit. See what I'm saying here? You also notice that when you punch it, the clippings are going to fall out the bottom. So, here's the process. Take your counter. Slip it in here. I give it a, just a little bit of pressure to make sure it's lined up there straight against the guardrails. Punch and rotate. Punch, rotate. As simple as that. And uh, I've experimented with a couple different ways of doing this. One is to give it a good hit and let it pop back up like that. The force of that driving the uh, the clipping to fall out the bottom because the clipping can uh, get caught in there and kind of distort your cut. So that's one way to do it, but uh, another way that I found that also works pretty well is you cut, keeping pressure on the tool, start to slip it in on the next corner, and as you let up and you're pushing in, it 90% of the time drives the clipping that was stuck in it back out. So, there's a lot of different ways to do it. The idea is just keep an eye on it, watch for the clippings to fall out, and if you don't see it, just you know, give it a couple hits, let the clipping fall out. A lot of times also, I got in the, in the habit of uh, clipping and then running my finger down on the, underneath the uh, die, and it just kicks any, anything that's stuck on there back in. So let me do one here at about my normal speed and make sure that you're punching in the same direction as the die that originally punched the counters punched, kind of going with the grain. That way you make ensure a, the cleanest possible cut and um, the least likely chance that you're going to start separating the layers. So. And that's really all there is to it. Sorry about that. Earlier I uh, lost battery power right at the end there. Um, basically I just wanted to show you the difference between a, a pre-cut counter and a counter after using um, the uh, radial uh, puncher. So I'm going to put one of those up on screen here. And you can see it does a really good job. Um, I would highly, highly recommend this product uh, if you have you know, the money to spend. I think it really will cut down time um, if you want those rounded corners and uh, it's certainly a heck of a lot faster and more precise than trying to use some nail clippers. Um, one thing I did want to say is I noticed while I was using it the, it started to, to build up on resistance. There was very very fine metal shavings and it got a little bit squeakier as I went. Um, obviously um, that means I think you're definitely going to want to add some sort of lubrication to it. Um, either a PB blaster or a uh, silicone based lubricant. And obviously if you're going to do that, you know, you do it lightly, keep it away from the dye, uh, wipe up any drips, and obviously you could do some test cuts on some uh, blank counters or something. Make sure you're not going to get any of that grease or oil on your freshly punched counters. So, 
Uh, overall, I think uh, this was an excellent investment. It's perfect for what I needed. Um, so I guess uh, I guess I better break out that copy of uh, Battle for Normandy, huh?